Taking a look at the Nautilus file manager, we will take a brief look at the file system prior to moving back to the terminal. Now, we start with Joe, which is the home directory, but the overall Linux file system can be accessed using this file system icon. We are now looking at the entire file system. These are all system directories, bin, boot, dev, etc, or etsy. There is home, and if you open it up, you can see that home contains Joe's home folder. That's where Joe's home is. There are many system directories in the Linux file system, including one called var. And in var is another subdirectory called log, and that's where these system logs are contained. It's right here. That's where all of these system logs, and there are many others. That graphical tool does not show all of them. It just shows the most common ones. But as you can see, there are many other logs. Now, these logs are very easy to view in the terminal. We can see where we are by noticing the tilde sign to the left of the blinking cursor. That tells us we are in home, in our home directory. We can also type the command PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory, and that tells us the full path. We are in slash home slash Joe. Let's change to the main root directory, sort of at the very top of all the directories. We will do change directory, CD, and then a simple forward slash. That stands for the root partition. And as you can see, to the left of the blinking sign, the location of where we are is now a slash. That stands for our top level root directory. We can't go any higher than that. Do an LS and you will see a list of all the folders that we were just looking at in the graphical file manager. It's the same list of folders. If we go up two levels, up to the main partition, we can see a list of all these directories, starting with bin, and then boot, and then CD-ROM, which is really just a link to a folder, and then dev. We have the same here bin, boot, cd-rom, dev, and there's home. We can see we can go into home, cd home, and we can see there's only one folder because we only have one user named Joe. We can go cd Joe, cd Joe, and now we are back at our home. Same as if we had done cd tilde. So let's go back to the root partition and do an ls again. And now let's go into the var directory. So you can see now to the left of the blinking cursor, we are in slash var. Let's do an ls and see what we have here. There's lots of subdirectories and including one called log. So let's do a cd log. And now we are in slash var slash log. And here's a list of all the different log files that our system maintains. The log files are the white files. The directories are the blue lettered words. And the red words are the backups. They are zipped files of previous weeks. Our Linux system maintains a rotated set of logs. It rotates out the logs every week. And so the logs that have .1.gz and .2.gz, for example, are old prior week's logs. But as you can see, we have lots of logs here that we can look at if we were trying to debug a particular problem. And using the less command allows us to take a look at the, the logs just to view them one page at a time. Less, the, here is less looking at the messages log. And we can use the page up and the page down keys to go forward and back uh, to view each page one page at a time. And then when we are done, hit Q to exit out. Now, the last little command that we'll talk about during this tutorial is apt-get. apt-get is the command line way of maintaining your Linux system, your Ubuntu system. apt-get is from Debian, which is a Linux distribution that's been around over 10 years and is the Linux distribution upon which Ubuntu is based. apt-get is a very powerful command. It can help you install new software, remove software, and update your system. apt-get needs to be run as the super user or the root user. If one were to type apt-get update, which is the command to simply update the repositories, in other words, to download the information about all the latest pieces of software, it will say that we do not have permission says permission denied. sudo is the command that must be entered prior to any root level commands in the Ubuntu system. So we would type sudo, which stands for super user do apt get update. 
and it will ask us for our super user password. And if we type that, apt-get update will then access all of those repositories and fetch all the latest information for us. And then apt-get upgrade is the equivalent command to upgrade the system, which is the same thing we see up in this little icon when it tells us that there are system updates to be, to be uh, installed. If we do apt-get upgrade, it will give us we need to do sudo apt-get upgrade. It will give us a list of all the packages that have updates that need to be updated. And it will give us, you can see there's a lot, 91 packages for 161 megabytes. It will ask us if we want to continue. And at this time, we'll say no. But that is a way to do these things in the command line rather than using any of the graphical tools. There's a lot more to apt-get, and there's a lot of excellent documentation on the Ubuntu website, in the wiki, and in the community documentation, and, and other places, and it's strongly encouraged that all users read all about apt-get before using it, because it is a very powerful command. With that, that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much.